Can we please just get me? I need an ambulance. A distraught wife's screams of desperation. There's blood all over the place. I can't make them get up. A beloved father with a history of heart trouble found unresponsive. He's so cold. It appears to be a heartbreaking tragedy. I'm thinking a heart attack in a sleep. But what really happened inside this barn is a betrayal too evil for many in the tiny town of Coweta, Oklahoma to even comprehend. That's what gives me, you know, goosebumps. It's scary to think that people could do that here in rural America. There are two things Arthur Bernie loved, his family and his horses. He was just a simple country family man. Arthur's daughters, Karen Jefferson and Samantha Payne, say their dad kicked off every day, cracking open his favorite soda. Dad only drank Mountain Dew. And he camped off every night in the barn, tending to his horses. I thought Daddy did no wrong, ever. But as Arthur gets older, his daughters say he begins to change. He even blindsides his wife of 20 years with a divorce. His daughters say it was a midlife crisis. He was not happy about getting older. And so I think the older he got, he wanted to find somebody that brought maybe his, his younger years back to him. Arthur begins hanging out at bars, and that's where he meets a younger lady named Patricia. My mom wore mom jeans, tennis shoes, t-shirts, normal stuff. Patricia wore spandex shorts and tank tops, spray tan. She looked trashy, but not a cute trashy. Like, it, it just was, I didn't picture her to be my dad's type. It turns out Patricia's exactly Arthur's type. Within months, they elope in Sin City. They did not tell us before they went to Vegas and got married because they knew we would not approve of it. And there are even more surprises. A few years later, Arthur and Patricia announced the arrival of a baby girl named Michelle. I thought he was crazy. Me and Samantha, we were grown. Why start over? I mean, he had grandkids. Michelle quickly becomes the apple of her daddy's eye, spending afternoons with Arthur learning to ride horses. She had everything she could ever want. Swimming pool, horses, I mean, four-wheelers, whatever she wanted. But as Michelle gets older, she becomes a mama's girl. If her mom got out of sight, she would freak out. Mama, 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 mama. She was just always a little odd, would be the best way to describe Michelle. By the time she's a teenager, her half-sisters say Michelle has become a spoiled little brat. She was just a spoiled child. She just needed some rules, and she didn't have any. The older Michelle got, the worse her attitude toward dad got because she began to want to do more stuff when it comes to boys and going out, and dad didn't go for that. Arthur tries to lay down the rules, but Patricia tells her husband to back off. I think Trish wanted a best friend instead of a daughter, and it, it, they became more of a best friend relationship than a mother and daughter relationship. Arthur is getting frustrated. He would ground her, and Trish would unground her. It, it was just a constant battle with them over her where Dad was not going to win. Then Arthur hits the roof when he walks in to find his 14-year-old daughter wrapped up in the arms of a full-grown man. My dad came home one evening from work, and he walks in, and there sat Patricia, Michelle, and beside Michelle with his arm around her was a 27-year-old man that Michelle was so-called dating. Needless to say, my dad did not take that very well. His daughters are worried. The tension appears to be taking a toll on their dad's health. He's only 54, but begins slurring his words and having dizzy spells. I thought his drinking had caught up with him, and he smoked a lot. <laughs> and so I thought it was he was having just legitimate health issues. He looked terrible. He looked um, unkept, so to speak. He looked so bad that several people were like, what's wrong with him? And, you know, what's going on? Karen and Samantha beg their dad to get help. But their stepmom, Patricia, tells them not to worry. Reassuring the girl, she personally gives Arthur his medicine every day. She said he had went to the doctor and everything had checked out. 
but the girls say they can see a little bit of their dad dying every day. On the night of Arthur and Patricia's 16th wedding anniversary, Patricia and Michelle arrive home after a mom-daughter trip to the mall. Patricia heads to the barn to check on Arthur and finds his lifeless body in a pool of blood. <laughs> in a panic, Patricia frantically calls 911. My husband, I guess, is failing and there's blood all over the place. I can't make him get up. Is he awake at all? No. Is he breathing? I can't tell. Okay. And you said there's blood all over him? Blood all over it, all over the place. The operator patches in a specialist who tells Patricia to start CPR. Me and you, it's, we're his only chance of survival until those paramedics get there, okay? Okay. Okay. Come out for me. For 11 terrifying minutes, Patricia is feverishly trying to restart her husband's heart. You're doing a great job. I am. Keep him going. Finally, help arrives. Okay, let, let's take over, okay? Okay. A deputy wearing a body camera is also on the scene. When they got to the residence, they discovered Arthur Bernie laying there in the uh, floor of the barn, uh, and he was unresponsive. Sadly, it's too late for Arthur. At just 54, the father of three is dead. We were all crying in shock. We were just mainly want to know how and what, what happened. Patricia tells the family she believes Arthur's heart finally gave out, then he fell and hit his head. But overwhelming grief is about to turn into vicious family finger pointing. The medical examiner revealing Arthur Bernie's death was no accident. They took his body to the uh, medical examiner's office um, and before conducting the autopsy, they took an x-ray up next, the shocking results of that x-ray. The sheriff at the time met me and he said, can you keep a secret? So they're thinking he's out there in the barn, in the dark, trying to feed his horses, has a heart attack, hits his head, that's why there's blood everywhere. Nothing really from the initial crime scene made investigators think that there was any type of foul play involved. 